Well, good morning and welcome to the Church Office Podcast. My name's Gavin Smith and it's a joy this morning to welcome Verity to the podcast. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much for inviting me. I'm really excited to be part of it. It's great. It's lovely. And we're really looking forward to kind of talking to you. Verity serves as a parish administrator at St George's and St Paul's Church in Tiverton. Is that right? Have I got that correct? That's correct. Yes, in Devon. In Devon. So the nice part of the world, actually, Devon, isn't it? It's lovely um, to be serving there. Tell us a little bit about Verity, how long you've been in post and um, and how you kind of got started in this in this role as a parish administrator. Sure, I've been in post for about five years, five years in October, I think, and um, I used to work as a school administrator and a teaching assistant, and I've got quite a sort of history with admin. Um, I've been part of St. George and St. Paul's for about 10 years, and so when this post came up, it was doing something I love at a place that I love and I'm really invested in, Um, so it was a no-brainer for me to go for it, and I'm really grateful to have been chosen for the role. Yeah, it is a real privilege, isn't it, to serve our local church? So not just to come in to kind of hire, a, you know, be hired into a role that you're not part of the church, but actually to kind of be serving the church that you love. And that that's wonderful. I, I absolutely love that. So tell me, what are some of the things that you're you're passionate about? So you're passionate about church administration. Have you, I am. You're, you're I really married. Am. You've got kids. What, tell us a little bit about yes, your life. I'm, I'm uh, married to my husband, Malcolm. And yeah. we have a son called Sam, who's 17. And okay. um, yeah, I, I am really passionate about admin. That sounds such a weird thing to say, um, yeah. but some, somebody has to be. Um, yeah. And I, I'm, I call myself a self-confessed admin nerd. I love yeah. techie things. I love systems and workflows and planning. I love working behind the scenes to see things happen and and be part of what makes Sunday and and outreach and other things that the church does yeah. um, happen so yeah I, um, it's a definite calling and it's yes. uh, I mean we can't all be called to be preachers otherwise nothing would ever get done that's um, true I hope I don't get in too much trouble for saying that <laughs> um, but you know um, it is it is part of the body of the church um, and uh, so yeah I, I, I do love it I am passionate about it yeah, I, I get people who say to me, how is it, you know, how, how is it possible that you love spreadsheets, that you you love finance, that you love systems, you know, and uh, they don't get it. And so today's podcast is kind of entitled The Weird and Wonderful World of Church Administration. And uh, it's a very diverse role, isn't it? And you, you get to kind of be involved in lots of different things. Tell us a bit about what you most enjoy about your role there. Um, wow. I mean, it is so, so diverse. And I love that it's different every day. So there are the regular things that you do on a daily or a weekly basis, but there is always something new and interesting. Um, Almost every single day, um, I have conversations with my mum when I'm walking home from work often, and she's like, what weird thing have you done today? Or what wonderful thing have you done? (laughs) Um, And there's just, it's just always full of stories. I love how varied it is. I can in one day, I could be writing a newsletter, creating a web page. I could be um, helping vulnerable people who knock at yeah. the door. I could be uh, answering the phone a million times. I could be even trying to catch birds that have come into church and figure out what to do with them. It is, it is just so interesting. And I, and I, I guess I'm the kind of person that loves to, to have something unexpected and yeah. exciting to do every week, every day. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, I wrote a, an article on the, uh, the, the website, the church office website, it talked about the kind of the, the invisible man and woman, the kind of the people that we are behind the scenes serving in our churches. And uh, one of the, th- the three sort of illustrations that I've used in it is kind of the, the plate spinner and we can definitely relate to that, isn't it? You're rushing from one thing to keep it going, and then you run back to something else. Um, and then there's this kind of ordered one where you're the orchestra and you're the conductor that's kind of bringing people in and their gifts and you're coordinating a, a beautiful sound. And then the third one I love is kind of special ops agent. You know, they're kind of dropping in, doing something behind the scenes that nobody really sees or notices, but you get something done and uh, I've got a church member who really thrives on identifying the things that are different in the week from a from church from one Sunday to the next and I remember we put up a new sign on the on the front of the building and one week he missed it and he was absolutely gutted but there was this joy in me that 
but yes, we managed to pull this off without anyone noticing. And still people now, six months later go, oh, I, I love that new sign. It's brilliant. You know, and you think, well, it's almost a, you know, it's getting almost a year old, but there's something just wonderfully joyful about kind of working behind the scenes and making people successful or just playing a part and enjoying kind of uh, releasing people. And uh, that's, that's kind of our, our topic today, the weird and wonderful things. So fire off. What are some of the things that you've been asked to do that you go, oh my goodness, this is kind of crazy. Um, wow. There's so many different things. Um, I actually put, um, I'm actually co- in contact with quite a lot of other church administrators through yeah. UCAN, uh, the UK Church Administrator Network. And it's yeah. wonderful to be able to, to swap war stories with other church administrators. <laughs> and and um, I actually asked them the question, um, the forum, who who can tell me, tell me one weird thing and one wonderful yeah. thing that you've done recently? And the list was brilliant I've oh, got um, I'll just uh, I'll just find it it's wonderful um so we had people who were rescuing bats um yeah. bailing out flooded boiler rooms the mystery of the toilet that fell off the wall um <laughs> dealing with pigeons in the roof or mice yeah. eating communion wafers there's quite a lot of animal related yeah things. there is um tracking down a missing coffin um oh, no. I oh, know. My goodness. I'm glad that wasn't something I've had yeah. to experience before. Um, and for me, sometimes I could be looking at dusty old maps with magnifying glasses, trying to figure out parish boundaries. Um, the other day, I was just trying to figure out how to stick an ear back on a wooden donkey. <laughs> <laughs> it is just so random. And I love that about it. I really yeah. do. Someone yeah. once asked me, actually, what, what do you even do? Do you just make cups of tea and, and polish the cross? And I was like, yeah. you have no idea unless yeah. you've actually done it yourself. Um, yeah. I think it's only other church admins really know what it's like. Yeah. Um, yeah. I can relate to the kind of we had a squirrel runt that ran into the church and uh, we had to kind of like close off the doors and narrow this thing. And, and the poor squirrel just. He, he, he thought the door was open and he ran straight into it and knocked himself out completely. And we were sort of trying to, you know, move him outside and bring him back to life. And, you know, you, you go home and you tell your wife and you say, that was today's kind of highlight was this yeah. squirrel, saving this squirrel from uh, from sort of dying in the church building. And uh, yeah, lots of animal stories, isn't there, with mice and various things. And Definitely. bats is, yeah, is a bit of a scary one, I guess, if you get a bat in there and all the legislation around it and everything yeah. else so it's uh it's a tricky but we we do have to kind of balance all those practical things and kind of make sure that we're being legal make sure that we're doing all the right things making sure we're ticking the boxes but but wanting to serve people isn't it and that's kind of yes. a big part of the role isn't it was, um yeah absolutely there were so many wonderful stories as well um so not just the weird and unusual stuff but the stories of people helping the vulnerable helping yeah. people who've knocked at the door who might be looking for food or for support and helping that person find that food and that support yeah um and praying with people um so you might have a really hectic week and then you know you just need to stop and pray with somebody because they're going yeah. through a really hard time yes um, and for me, I've been really privileged um, and honoured to be able to help work behind the scenes supporting some local asylum seekers um, that have been staying locally in the area. Um, so they've recently come to us and and being able to have, be part of the team that's providing them with food and with clothing, with mm-hmm. English lessons and other things that they need and support is has been a real honour. Um, and I come home feeling like I've done good work, you know, when you yeah. just feel like this has been this has been a good day. I've done some good work. Yeah. And, and there is a lot of uh, needy people out there. We've just started mm-hmm. recently a kind of cap project sort of Christians Against Poverty. Mm-hmm. And um, it's yeah, we're interacting with a lot more people. And and uh, yeah, there's some really tough situations out there, isn't there, since COVID and job losses and people experiencing a lot of debt and. And yeah, it's kind of, it's lovely, isn't it, to be behind the scenes and we may not be the kind of direct person that was, works with them ongoingly, but that that role of connecting people into some of the services, kind of, you know, speaking to the right minister, getting the right support at that right time. There's something lovely about that, isn't there? Connecting the public to what we're doing in the church is, is, is a privilege. It really is. Yeah. 
Definitely. We're not on the front lines, um, but that's not the nature of our role. But we are helping line up the goals. We are, you know, we are there helping things happen. Um, and so, yeah, it's, it's lovely to be part of that. Yeah, that's great. I remember uh, some of the other kind of weird things. I, someone said to me, um, you know, similar to you, don't you just drink coffee and read the Bible and have all this kind of, you know, organize the pastors. And uh, But, you know, there's so many different things that we're involved in, like heating programs, working out technical things. If the internet goes down, I seem to be the person that has to kind of, you know, be the BT engineer to, to sort it out, um, you know, with devices and and all the things I mean I was cracking into our safe the other day because we you know we ended up getting locked out of it and you know you you, you kind of go from one thing to the next and and uh, it, it's fun to look back at and um, I think one of the things that I've just experienced is just this wonderfully God's grace you know I think there's um in uh, in the book that came out the UCAN's latest book on kind of spreadsheets and prophecy and it talks about time management and and I've just experienced that where you've gone how on earth did I get all of this done today you know, if you were to write a list of everything that you achieved, you think I, I, I would never have been able to kind of get that done. But the Holy Spirit is at work and God's grace is at work in the role that we get to kind of interact in that way. And, and there's something really special about that in the role. And I, I, I love that. It's hard to convey that, isn't it, to others that are trying to listen in or hear in of what, what we're doing behind the scenes. Definitely. I'm, I'm really lucky to work within the actual church vestry. Um, so I'm able to go into the church and pray. And uh, I always pray at the beginning of every week. And, and then I, I'll pray sort of sporadically as the need arises. And there are, have been several occasions when I've sat in church and I've just said, Lord, I need a miracle this week yeah. <laughs> to get my job done. Um, I don't know how I'm going to do it. And there was this, this great prayer that we put out on our social media a little while ago using the word surrender your agenda. Mm. I'm not sure where that came from. I think it's been around for a while. Yeah, but lovely it, though. It really resonated with me that actually sometimes we can get so caught up in our to-do lists but and forget the sort of focus, um, to focus on why we're there, what yeah. the vision is of the church and what God wants us to do. Um, yeah. So it's really important to not get too caught up in our to-do lists and actually give it all to God. Um, yeah. So, yeah, my faith is a huge part of encouraging me in my role. Yeah, that's great. That's lovely. I, I think that's wonderful. Yeah, surrender your agenda. And and it really is, a like we talked at the start, it is really a calling, isn't it? It isn't just a job. It's more than a job. You know, we, you know when you play our part, it's it's bringing value to ministry that goes out and the gospel that goes out and and we know people's lives are changed i think so many times i've been involved in organizing like an alpha behind the scenes and getting the catering and doing all the aspects and then you you go on the the evenings to serve and you watch god open up people's hearts and and minds to the gospel and then you see people get baptized and you think this is amazing. God's like involved us in this part. We've played our part in here, but God's been doing something here. And I just find that wonderfully rewarding and, and joyful to go and look at it and go, yeah, we've, we've played a part. So there's this real enthusiasm for me. I love shiny stuff, new stuff. And when there's new projects, I love getting involved in all of that, but it's, it is reminding ourselves and connecting to uh, the kind of practical things that we do to the gospel, to the ministry, to the vision of the church, to see, can you link what you're doing to that? Can you be encouraged? Uh, because sometimes we don't get a great deal of encouragement. What's what's your team like at encouraging you and and uh, understanding what you do? Um, I think we're. I love my team. I think we all get on really well. Yeah. Um, I think they are quite encouraging, and we're all encouraging of each other. Um, but we're also sometimes so busy, um, yeah. and we, you know, we, we might forget to to actually sort of lift each other up. And I often find that. Um, when the church is being prayed for on a Sunday, often the administrator is left out of the, the mm -hmm. names of people. Um, but I, that's perfectly fine um, because I read something and I wish I could remember where I read it or who said it. But I remember reading something once that said that if you are invisible, if, you, if your work goes unnoticed, you're mm -hmm. doing it right. Yeah. Because that is that is the nature of your job is to work behind the scenes. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that I take encouragement from that. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah, it's great. I like it at the end of 1 Corinthians 15. And and there's this kind of, you know, your your work and your labors are not in vain. 
you know and and there's this kind of trust in god that there's this fruit that comes and, and we may not necessarily always see it but um yeah there's something wonderful about just continuing to do what god's called us to do be faithful to what we've been you know asked to do and and serve as we best we can for the glory of god and and trust that all these other things yeah you're right that we don't necessarily need the recognition there's there's that joy and 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 we have to remind ourselves of that don't we that truth of that actually that god does see it so there's an audience that that of him rather than necessarily a huge audience that's around us encouraging us all the time and and i guess that that takes a bit of time to get used to doesn't it when when i was first in the role i was thinking you know why isn't anyone noticing these things that i'm doing but actually as you grow into you think oh there's actually a joy when they don't notice it because uh it's um it, it's working something's happening and it's good so uh I, I love that it's really encouraging it's really lovely to to talk to you talk to me a bit about um you've been doing it five years i've been doing it 18 years and kind of the motivation to keep going um what what are you kind of how are you kind of encouraging yourself in that definitely for me um it is my faith as i've mentioned um that's a huge part i find it so encouraging to to see in myself the spiritual growth that I've had in my Mm -hmm. sort of understanding of uh, the Christian faith, of how a church works. Um, Things just make more sense to me now than they ever did when I was just sitting in the pews. Um, And also I'm excited and encouraged because this diversity that we have in our role means that we learn, we're constantly learning. Mm -hmm. And I I love learning new things, new skills. And especially in the last couple of years, I'm sure you you might be the same yeah. we've we've learned so many more new things um how yeah. to to make church happen in a pandemic um so so I love that that for me really encourages me um and and as I said as well the, the you know the good stories of, of of being part of a project that that ultimately really helps people mm. is is super encouraging um, and I and I'm encouraged by the Bible as well. I um, like in preparation for today, I was I was looking up where admin is mentioned in the Bible. Yeah. And I mean, they don't necessarily quote parish administrators or operations directors, but there, there are places in the Bible where there were administrators yes, definitely. Of, of a kind. Um, and I was looking at 1 Corinthians 12, 28. Yeah. And if you look at the message version, it talks about, um, you know, lists the body of the church and the different roles and and gives some examples. And there are two things in there that scream admin, which are helpers and organizers. And that is definitely what we are. Um, So there is a place for us. It's a definite ministry. And I love when I connect to other, other church administrators, reminding them that admin is a ministry. Um, It really is. So... I'm yeah, encouraged I, by that. I think that is so encouraging and and your perspective on that is is brilliant isn't it yeah we want everything we do to flow out from the bible and, and to see it listed as a spiritual gift and it to be valued and it to be needed in the church and it, it's so it's so right and my senior pastor is so encouraging to me he was saying to me you know unless we work together you know we're not going to see this church flourish and we need all the different not just to highlight the the, the administrative gift as uh, you know as just it should be promo but actually that we should highlight all the gifts and and to see the body come together and see it complement each other uh, and go from strength to strength and um yeah i love that that we can faithfully pay our part and uh, and then do it but what you're also doing which i love which is coming across well is that there's this reflection and this time to think about actually make the connection and to to seek God and to think about what we're doing um and it's it, like you said at the beginning it's easy to get lost in the uh, to-do list and to not make those connections and to not see it in a kind of spiritual light um and we, we have to see that don't just see it as a practical thing we, we've got to bring the two together of we that this is ministry this is gospel ministry I love what you're doing on you can I, I see you on the forum pop up and bow down. And I, I just want to encourage you before the end because you've got such a wonderful heart to encourage other people. And um, just even what you've said on the podcast today it is lovely. And so keep doing what you're you're doing. Um, I know I know a number of people that I've seen on the UCAN forum just go, oh, Verity said this. And they were encouraged and and you, you put stuff out there and it's it's wonderful so oh, and that's kind of the reason that I was drawn to you I was like right we need to get Verity on the website on the podcast because <laughs> she 
there's a life about her. She's got real clarity about what you're doing. Um, there's just a lovely spiritual, you know, gift that that's in you. And so, yeah, be encouraged in in all of that. Thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, I feel you, really shy. <laughs> oh, you, you've Thank done a wonderful you. job. Um, so actually, have you booked in to go to the UCAN conference? I have. I have. I'm really excited. It's my first ever kind of conference um, for any kind of job I've ever had. Um, but I'm I'm primarily just so excited to, to be able to meet more uh, church administrators. Yeah. I've loved being part of UCAN. Uh, for the last few years and and meeting up with other administrators who just get it yeah. um, so I'm hoping it's going to be a real time of um, spiritual growth a bit of mm. a bit of spiritual topping up as well I hope as yeah. well as the networking and learning um, again I, I love to learn so I'm, I'm really excited for it I can't wait for it yeah <laughs> I think before? I've never been before um just a big fan of you can and um I yeah I'm just so pleased that we can do a bit of a promo on it here because I've never been to the conference the first one I went to was the virtual one and um because of covid and and I just loved it I just thought like you say it was so refreshing it was great to connect with other people who get you and understand how you think and and also can just encourage you in a way that that maybe you don't always hear around you in your own teams um, so yes, yeah, so if you're a church administrator listening into the podcast today, please check out UCAN. There's membership available. Uh, the membership gives you access to lots of, uh, you know, people, policies, procedures, uh, training, seminars. There's, there's so much kind of peer-to-peer -peer support, isn't there? Meeting up with local groups. Have you got a group that you go to? Do you want yes. to tell us a little bit about that? That'd be yeah, wonderful. Yeah, I, I uh, lead the Devon group sort of on and off for the last few years. I'm currently leading it again. Um, and it is great. And pre-pandemic, we would meet, meet up regularly for coffee and cake sort of once a term. And uh, just the look on other administrators' faces when they meet each other is, mm. is just great when they realise that they can talk to others, that, that yeah. understand what the role is like, and sharing, sharing those weird and wonderful stories <laughs> is great. Um, but also upskilling each other. I mean, you know, the forum, the UCAM forum is excellent for if yes. you're stuck, if you need recommendations, if you're not sure what to do, if you're doing the right thing. I know that a lot of administrators, including myself, come into the role um, starting from scratch there is a lot to learn so so the forum is a great place to ask those questions what do I do um, yeah. because sometimes there's no one else to ask yeah that's right and and it's there's no silly questions there I love it people put stuff out and say you know I need help on this can I have this or does anyone got any recommendations for for builders, I mean, it goes to all sorts of levels, doesn't it? And, and I love that. And what it, what I think it does wonderfully is it gives um, administrators that little bit of confidence, doesn't it, to go? Because you are, sometimes you do feel like you're on your own. Mm -hmm. And if you can ask somebody and just get a bit of advice, um, it just gives you that more confidence to say, actually, yeah, this is a decision I need to make. And um, I feel that kind of support and being able to bounce an idea from someone is is so helpful isn't it and so so if you're listening and you're not part of UCAN then please log on check out the website look at the membership and um, there's a conference coming up in June towards the end of June I know you'd be welcome to join us I know there's a cost to it but like you say there's so much value that gets added to these conferences that it really is worth the two or three hundred pounds um, investment into yourself so that is so so important well, if you've uh, if you've not checked out the uh, the church office website, then please log on and have a look at what's available on there. There's articles, there's the podcast today will be on there. Um, there's videos, there's document templates. Again, things that might help administrators in their role. So please check that out. And uh, if you've got anything to add or contribute, then please get in contact at info at the church office.co.uk. Verity, you've done brilliant and it's lovely to meet you. And I, I just love your joy and your passion. It just comes across so, so well. So thanks for giving us your time to come on today. Thank you so much. I feel honoured to have been asked. Thank you. Oh, it's lovely. And uh, yeah, we'll look forward to hearing from Verity again. She's come so come across so well. We'll get you a little slot, I think, on the podcast. <laughs> 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 it's brilliant. Well, thank you so much for listening on the podcast and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.